One of my favorite Cold War American jets is the F-4 Phantom II. I actually quite like the tandem two-seat arrangement and the huge amounts and variety of weapon loadout this jet could carry. The need for the F-4 stemmed from a US Navy requirement to have a multi-role attack fighter. So, in 1953, McDonnell Aircraft began working on revising its F-3H Demon naval fighter with expanded capabilities and better performance. Many variants were tried, but the one that stood out in terms of performance was the J-79-powered version with a top speed of Mach 1.97, which was eventually called the XF-4H-1 prototype. It had 11 weapon hardpoints for a wide variety of weapon loads. The Phantom made its maiden flight on 27th May 1958. Despite being a heavy aircraft at 60,000 pounds or 27,000 kilograms of maximum takeoff weight, the F-4 has a top speed of Mach 2.23 and an initial climb rate of over 41,000 feet per minute, which is 210 meters per second. The aircraft with designations F-4 B, C, D and E were widely used in the Vietnam War. So, today I'll be building the Revell 172nd scale F4J Phantom II in the original box color scheme from VF84 Jolly Rogers Squadron of the US Navy. Okay, so here's a look at the box art and it mentions that it's a level 3 kit, so it's recommended for an intermediate or an advanced level modeler. It says it was boxed in 2016 and interestingly it's made in Poland. Nice detail here on the back of the box and it's a side opening box so let's get the goodies out and see what we have starting with the decal sheet. So that's the first thing we are greeted with and look at that. Lovely printed decals by Revell and uh, they're very good quality and in good register. Right, so the next thing is this colored instruction sheet. I have seen only the Edward instruction sheets that are colored, but this one was a good touch. It gives these black items, which are items not to be used during the build. And the rest of it has about 35 build steps in total, followed by a color callout guide and decal guide. So let's get the actual goodies out and let's cut open the plastic bag. And the very first thing we will take a look at is this very clear plastic. The canopy is absolutely crystal clear. Just a uh, brush of uh, gloss paint will actually make the canopy look magnificent. And here's a little bit of detail and what a bummer. Only two pilots are included and one is in the sitting pose and the other is in the standing pose. Well, that's a real bummer because why would you have a single pilot flying an F-4 Phantom? And here's a look at all the details. Nice detail on the seat. Look at that pilot in the standing pose. What an amazing detail that has. I probably thought of uh, painting that standing pilot up as uh, Robin Olds, but we'll see how it goes. Look at that instrument panel detail. Lovely details on the exhaust on the hard points as well nice river detail and so I began so the first step was to put a black paint over the cockpit areas because the phantom cockpits are <laughs> black after uh, priming up the uh, pilot figures in gray primer I then started dry brushing the olive drab on the pilots and the seats of the phantom the seats have a nice bit of uh, seat belt detail inbuilt into them so I didn't have to scratch build them. So I simply then mixed Fevacryl black and white to create a light grey paint and I painted up the uh, seat belts.
I then took some uh, Camelin silver and dry brushed it on the cockpit switches just to enhance that detail a little bit. And yes, I did uh, paint up the uh, pilot in the standing pose as Robin Olds and it's indicated by that iconic moustache that Robin Olds uh, wore during his uh, career as a Phantom pilot. But at this point I had decided to go with a closed canopy with the two pilots sitting inside the Phantom. The upper and lower surfaces of the wings were attached together which was pretty straightforward and this is how the uh, wing assembly basically slots into the fuselage from the underside and uh, you can see a little bit of a gap there. Uh, of course by pressing it down a little bit um, and gluing it that gap could be filled but then it did require a little bit of filling as you will see as we progress through the build. Right, so we needed filler in a lot of places as you can see on the nose, on the uh, air intake undersides, on the uh, fuselage top. Basically it leaves an entire seam line along the uh, fuselage. After priming the uh, entire model with Bosni Siemens Grey, I created a light grey tone, basically a grey-blue looking tone with fabricable black, white and a little bit of blue to replicate the uh, grey that was prevalent on the uh, Phantoms. I then brush painted Fevicryl golden yellow on the uh, tip of the rudder and used Fevicryl black to detail the nose cone and the anti-reflector panel in front of the cockpit. Finally, I used my standard procedure of applying the decals, which is I applied watered down PVA glue to the place where the decals would go and then positioned the decal carefully um, in the place they need to be and then adjusted with a little toothpick and wiped off the excess with a cotton Q-tip. And as you can see, those squadron decals and markings look amazing on the uh, rudder of the Phantom. Similarly, the uh, Navy markings and the American flag. This is just an amazing touch to the kit. And here's a look at the uh, overall finished model, almost finished model with all the decals in place and a gloss coat on top of the model. And finally, I began working on the uh, stripe decal now this is a very interesting one and it took a long time to adjust it needed a, a lot of adjustment but the decal was really delicate um, I even ended up you know tearing it a little bit but thankfully uh, it wasn't beyond repair and then that was basically my learning there it required a lot of patience to align this uh, stripe and star decal on the upper part of the fuselage of the Phantom. And finally, because it's a Phantom, so why not weather it? And I tried a dark brownish wash on top of the uh, surfaces of the Phantom because the uh, weathering effects really come out nicely on these aircraft that are painted in the grey scheme of the US Navy. And then I followed it up with the dot filtering method using oil paints I took various shades of black brown green blue and 
a little bit of a red tone as well to um, simulate the uh, exhaust burn marks at the underside of the uh, the exhaust section of the Phantom. After all the uh, weathering was done, I started attaching the weapons, lots and lots of them. And finally closed up the uh, canopy of the Phantom. And here are the beauty shots of the completed model. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed building the model and showcasing it to you. If you like the video, click on the thumbs up. Do consider subscribing to the channel because that definitely helps me. And of course, I would like to request you to watch the video till the end because it's the viewership that matters, not just the subscriptions. Well, that is how the YouTube algorithm works now. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you again in the next build video, which will be coming up shortly. Stay safe. Bye bye.